Hey up, it's Cly here. There's a lot of blood in Bloodborne, surprisingly. You draw the blood of your enemies constantly, and you even use blood to heal yourself. But I've been ruminating on what Master Willem said. We are born of the blood, made men by the blood, undone by the blood. Fear the old blood. So I'm wondering, can we beat Bloodborne without blood? The rules are quite simple, really. We can't use anything that contains blood. So that includes things like healing vials, because they're just little jars full of blood, and upgrade materials, since they're made from hardened blood. If it says in the game that it's made from blood, we can't use it. When you attack an enemy, they spray blood everywhere, and if you've been hit, you can even attack the enemies to restore your health. Presumably using their blood to heal yourself, because even your hands make the enemies bleed and restore your health. So, to avoid that from happening, I won't be using any weapons that make blood spray from an enemy or give health back on attack. And that limits us to firearms, torches, and molotovs. And pebbles. Ah, but hang on a minute. Quicksilver bullets are made from blood. So, that's firearms and hunter's tools out of the question. The DLC, however, adds two different molotovs and a couple of cool glitches we can use, but uh, I don't have access to the DLC currently, so this will have to be done purely on base game. I will be leveling up and buying items, however. Blood echoes are the idea of blood, the memory of blood, the echo of blood. It's not actual blood. Blood echoes are a concept and not a physical thing. Now, you could argue that it comes from blood, it originates from blood, so I shouldn't level up or buy things from the messengers, because without blood, blood echoes wouldn't exist in the first place. And that's a very good point, and I wish I had a good response to that. Anyway, you can get the torch very early on, since it's behind the first hammer man you encounter in central Yharnam, along with some molotovs and some oil urns next to the crows. Bloodborne is a very broken game in lots of ways, and you can bet your anus I'll be taking advantage of that. All of the glitches I'm going to show are done on the current patch, so you can try them for yourself if you want to. I was going to skip the whole first section and go straight to the shadows of Yharnam, but look at all that blood that's spurting out of me. That skip requires far too much blood, so our first boss will be Father Gascoigne. He has his own share of glitches, and the safest one is not an easy one to perform. You need to access his boss room so he spawns in, and then quit the game or die. From his boss room you face the stairs leading up to it, jump onto the third post on the left of the stairs, and then save and quit just as your feet touch the third post. This took me a very long time, mostly because I'm shite. It's funny, I can quit out in a millisecond when I'm stood still, but doing it after a jump just makes my brain switch off for some reason. I landed it a few times, but I'd often make a mistake or slip off or something stupid. After many, 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 many attempts, I finally got a good quit out and I shimmied my way up the railing. And that's the easy part. Now, you sprint at the top of the railing, turn and jump to the left onto the opposite railing, roll through the gargoyle, and very, very carefully walk along the railing like a tightrope and don't fall off. This is an insanely tricky glitch to perform, but you'll see why I had to do it in a minute. I'll link the video I used to learn this glitch in the description, because Giant Cookie Jar saved my arse here. How they found this glitch, I have no idea, but I'm so thankful. After several minutes of shimmying, I finally managed to get to Gascoigne, and as you can see, his AI is frozen. So you can just stand here, and he'll never attack. Gascoigne has 2031 health, and the torch deals 7 damage. So as you can see, the pain of performing this glitch was a lot lesser than the pain of beating Gascoigne almost perfectly and hitting him 290 times. So now hopefully you'll understand why I'll be allowing myself to level up and buy stuff. When you do an AI freeze, there's no health bar, so I kind of just had to keep track of the hits in my head. Although I will admit that I lost count after the first 10 seconds of this fight, because I was still riding the high of pulling off that glitch. It only took me like, you know, three hours to do. 
You may also notice that Gascoigne has red on him. However, it's not spraying everywhere and covering me in blood. It's also not healing me or being consumed by me, so it's okay. Although, not ideal. Because I'd lost track of my hits, I decided to use one of my urns and some molotovs because they deal considerably more damage. Although he doesn't transition to his beast form when you do this glitch, which is a bit of a shame because he gains a weakness to fire when he does that. But the molotovs killed him eventually and I quickly cleaned my clothes to rid them of any stray blood that may have come near me. After the defeat of Gascoigne, I ran through Old Yarnum to pick up the Hunter's Torch, which does a lot more damage and I went to fight the next boss, the Blood Starved Beast. Which is a boss I'm not particularly fond of because they're very flaily and in phase two, they do poison damage. They are weak to fire though, which is good because that's the damage we're relying on. But even so, with no upgrades? Yeah. The Blood Starved Beast has 3,470 health and at this point, the Hunter's Torch deals 44 damage, which means I'd need to hit them 80 times. Of course, I could always throw an oil urn and hit them with a molotov for extra damage, but at the moment we're limited to 10 molotovs and that was my last oil urn. 80 hits on this boss without being hit could be done by someone who's actually good at the game. But do you know what the Blood Starved Beast is also weak to? It's weak to being too flaily for its own bloody good. Because if you stand here and bait the right arm swipe attack, it can phase itself through the wall and fall out of bounds. Uh, eventually. But once it dies, you get the Thumaru Chalice, which is essential for something in a minute. Bloodborne players know exactly what's about to happen. But before I do that, I need to do something else. I got kidnapped by the Bagman. And this is because I need to get to Dark Beast Paul and die to him. You could also kill him, but um, yeah. So I died to him. Now I can teleport to the Blood Starved Beast lamp, run all the way up through Old Yarnum and talk to Jura. I told him I'd spare the beasts of Old Yarnum and he gave me his badge, which I can use to buy oil urns and rope molotovs. He also gives you a pretty cool emote that wipes off blood from clothing. I mean, the emote doesn't actually do that, but we can pretend it does. Now it's time to put that chalice to good use. I'm gonna delve into the cum dungeon. While this is all going on, I would genuinely love to see someone beat Bloodborne using only an unupgraded torch and molotovs, glitchless, at level four with no healing. There is someone out there who will do this. I'm not that guy, but someone definitely is. And I hope they make a video of them doing it so I can marvel and feel a deep sense of inadequacy. The torches scale with arcane and if you upgrade them, they can be really powerful, especially against living things. It's just a shame we're not upgrading it. Molotovs also scale with arcane, so I'll be relying on them quite a lot, especially when it's combined with an oil urn for double damage. I leveled up my health, stamina, and arcane to the soft caps. Oh, look at that health bar. I can get hit a couple of times now. And with the remaining echoes, I bought loads of molotovs and oil urns. I have to take on the Cleric Beast next so I can get his badge. The oil and molotov combo is super strong. Sadly, when you do enough damage to him, he'll explode blood everywhere. There's not really too much that can be done about that because his limbs break very easily. So what I did was, is I just threw a molotov and looked away. I mean, if I don't see the blood, then it never existed. That's some sound logic. Some bosses also splurt blood everywhere when they die, so I had to make sure I was far enough away so the explosion didn't get much blood on me. Using his badge, I can buy the key that lets me bypass the platforming section to get to Amelia. It seems like you need to heal yourself to get through that section, and obviously, I can't do that. Vicar Amelia. Much like the Cleric Beast, if you do enough damage to her, she'll splurt blood everywhere. You could use the method I did earlier by throwing a molotov and quickly looking away so you don't see the blood. Or you could save and quit. Now we're outside her boss room at the fog gate. Walk up to the pillar on the left, take a teeny tiny step back and face the wall again. Enter the fog and Amelia's AI will break. She doesn't seem anywhere near as scary when she isn't trying to rip you in half. 
you can now attack Amelia at your own convenience. So I just oiled her up and threw some fire on her until she eventually exploded. I made sure to get some distance though because I didn't want to get any blood on me. Even so, I still got a little bit on me so I had to clean my clothes. We can now get the password to the Forbidden Woods. Fear, the old blood. Very apt for this playthrough. Surprisingly, I'm gonna do another glitch. You can enter the shadows of Yarnum's boss arena, realize you do piss all damage, and then save and quit. Once you're outside the fog, you walk up to the left wall until you see the prompt to pass through the fog. Turn your hunter to the left to face the stones, but while still seeing the prompt on screen, and if you've got the position right, you can swim through the fog and the shadows of Yarnum's AI will freeze, and you can attack them at your own leisure. This is the last AI freeze I know of, so every boss from here will have to be fought properly. Ish. Rom the Vacuous Spider is up next, and we're dealing pretty good damage with the Oil and Molotov combo. But Rom herself was obviously very unhappy with this whole scenario, so she decided to spam her Sky Ice move, and she squashed me. So as you can see, when I have to fight things legit, I'm really crap. <laughs> Next time around I spammed the rope molotovs, but it's a bit tricky because she's always moving and pushing you around and you basically need to grind your anus onto her before the molotov will do any damage because the radius is kinda small. I did manage to almost one cycle her and I may have been able to do it if I'd been a bit quicker with my oil and molly combo. I had to chase her down and then throw a molotov over her armoured head and onto her back. With the defeat of Rom, we get teleported to Yaha Ghoul and we get to fight the One Reborn. It's another one of those really flaily bosses that I don't particularly like too much. I only dealt 69 damage to the Bell Ringers, which is nice, but even with this much health, the One Reborn splattered me all over the wall before I even had a chance to touch him. It also appears to shoot blood. I don't want to see that. So, I'm going to skip this boss completely. To skip the One Reborn, you need to have activated the boss in the first place. Go to the Yahagul Chapel and drop down to the right where this gunman is. You can kill him if you want, but if you're quick, you can just jump from here and land on this little spire. From here, you run and jump off the right hand side and you'll get put into death cam mode. If you've seen any Dark Souls 1 speedruns or are familiar with the glitches in that game, then you'll know all about how this works. The game thinks we're both dead and alive at the same time, so nothing is loaded, but we're still able to move around. The game is now using tank controls and you can just move your hunter all the way down to the boss's arena. As you can see, the textures aren't loaded and some of them are even in low detail mode. From this point, you can just run directly to Mikalash's corpse because there's no collision loaded. It is a bit of a fiddly one because you can't see anything and you're using tank controls, but what you're looking for is for the bottom of the screen to have the white void and just have a little bit of a wander around the middle of the area until you see the prompt. I've got a question and I'd love to hear your opinion on this. On the way to Mikalash, you get a bit of a frenzy from the brain of Mensis and as far as I know, it's impossible to avoid having at least a little bit of frenzy. The meter just fills up regardless and it doesn't do any damage unless you stay in it for a long time and I made sure to get rid of all my insight before this so it went up even slower. But as you can see, blood is being pulled from me. It does no damage, so is this blood real? Or is it just imaginary? It doesn't leave any marks on your clothing or do any damage unless you've been in it for a long time, so I'm left to believe that this is imaginary blood. But what do you reckon? While we think about that, let's go and fight Mikalash. Ah, Mikalash. Lots of people hate this guy, but I quite like him, personally. His boss fight isn't that good, but he's a fun character, and that's what counts. There's a really easy way to beat Mikalash's first phase, and what you do is you bait the skeletons away, and then go and hide in the hallway to his boss room. If you then dip your toe into the boss room itself, Mikalash will activate, but the skeletons on the floor, they won't. Now all you have to do is walk back into the hallway itself and if you go back far enough so that you don't activate the skeletons outside, Mikalash will get himself trapped in the doorway and you're free to just oil him up and throw some fire on him. 
I'm sure you know about the poison knife cheese to kill him on the second phase, but obviously we can't do that because poison knives cause blood to spray everywhere. But what we can do is we can throw our remaining Molotovs at him. If I had 99 Arcane, I may have been able to take him out using only the Mollies, mm, but I'm not too sure about that. He had quite a bit of health left. If I had the DLC, I could have definitely killed him here because I would have had 20 extra Mollies, but I don't have that. I even threw some pebbles at him, just to add a little bit of extra damage. It was quite thrilling. So I dropped down and I torched him. The torch deals 17 damage and he has 5,250 health. So if we fought him straight up with just the torch, it would take 309 hits. Absolutely mental and if anyone ever does that, you're crazy. <laughs> Thankfully, Mikolash gets staggered by everything, so just spamming attacks works really well. This is one of the reasons why I upgraded my stamina so much, because the torch doesn't take much stamina away, and we can just spam it continuously. The only thing you really need to do is move from side to side to avoid the 10 tickles and try not to get fisted too much. Although, given the fact that it's Mikolash, I let him fist me a little bit. Now that Mikolash is down, it's time to oil up the wet nurse. The damage is pretty good with the oil and molly combo, but I have nowhere near enough mollies to take her out with just them alone. After I'd used all my mollies, she was just under half health, and I had to do the rest of the fight with the torch. This fight took me a very long time. And because she's a bit flaily, I got nicked a few times, which made me very nervous, especially because I can't heal, and I can't deal enough damage to stop her from going into nightmare mode. Funny thing is, you can stop her from summoning her clone if you dodge when she's summoning the thing, but I've never been able to do that trick because my timing is dog shit. <laughs> so I mostly just ran away. After a long time of running, dodging, and giving the nurse my hot stick, she went home and I was victorious. I wiped off all the blood and went to tell German about my victory, and we both agreed that blood is scary. And then German woke me up so I could be rid of this nightmare. Honestly, I would have loved to have fought German, but he's far too fast for the oil and molotovs to land consistently. It also wouldn't do nearly enough damage, even if every single one of them hit perfectly with counter damage. It could definitely be done though, because if you have the DLC, you get 20 extra mollies, and that would be plenty. But as I say, this is just base game. Me personally, I'm perfectly happy with the ending I got. So technically, no. You can't beat Bloodborne without blood because any and all attacks will cause some kind of bloodshed. And of course, I used Echoes so I didn't have to hit bosses thousands of times without getting hit. And so I could purchase Molotovs and stuff because they're not dropped by enemies and they're only purchasable. Well, you can find a few in the world, but definitely not enough. Although if we are talking technicality, it would be technically possible to beat everything in the game using only an unupgraded torch with no levels if you were the greatest Bloodborne player of all time. And even then, the torch itself causes some blood to spill, so yeah, not really possible, is it? Molotovs only is possible, but only if you have the DLC, I think. And even then, you need to use Blood Echoes to purchase them, so bloodless, I don't think it's possible, although I am willing to be proven wrong. Even so, after all this, you can definitely beat the game without using any blood items or consuming blood in any way, which is, in itself, a pointless achievement. I'm very much looking forward to seeing a true bloodless playthrough being done one day, because this was less of a bloodless playthrough and more of a less blood playthrough. Caveat central, as always with me. Thank you so much for watching, this was really fun to do, especially the glitches I've never done before. Absolutely crazy stuff. Please let me know any other fun challenge run ideas you'd like to see, hopefully nothing too torturous. Please do leave a like if you like, and subscribe if you want to, and as always, take care.